These machines have slow 486SX25 soldered directly to the board, and no regular socket for upgrades. And yet we have so far managed to more than double the speed by hacking the board. In previous videos we hacked the Mathco socket to take a regular 486DX. We have also built a socket blaster to allow us to use a much faster 3 or 3.45 volt 486. And we have doubled the VRAM for the local bus graphics by soldering an extra chip directly to the board. In this video we are going to try to overclock the board to take better advantage of a much faster 486. I have two IBM PS1s on the bench today because they have identical boards. But there was actually a third machine sold at the time, the 2155. The interesting thing about this machine is that it has a seemingly identical board, but it was sold with a DX266. This tells us that it might be possible to somehow hack our board to run at 33MHz too. I found a thread on Vogons with a picture of 2155 motherboard, but I couldn't see anything different around the chip that handles the speed. And the picture isn't high enough resolution to read what chips it has. But I left a comment and a viewer spotted something interesting up here by the ID connector. These two resistors up here differ slightly on the 2155 and the 2133 or 2156. Let's do some tracing and see what's going on here. Okay, so here's the chip that controls the speed. And up here are our suspect resistors, or in this case resistor, because the pads are empty for R174 and R175. And on this board there is a resistor on the pads for R176. So let's do some tracing here and see if these resistors are connected to our chip. And sure enough, this one is. Let's check this one here. Yeah, this one too. And finally, R174. Yep. So, sneaky IBM seems to have set the speed with tiny resistors instead of jumpers. Let's take a look at the datasheet. Okay, so the user Thermalbrong on Vogons has actually already provided us with all the relevant information from the datasheet. So the pin S0, S1 and S2 seems to be controlling the speed. So if we have a look at this table here, let's see if S0 is pulled up or pulled low. Okay, let's see if this matches the datasheet. So R174 goes to this pin here. And that is pin 6, and it's S0. Now let's check R175, and it's connected to this pin here. And that is S1. So I think thermal wrong is correct here. Now let's check R176, and it's connected to pin 11, and that's S2. So yeah, definitely. His assumptions are correct. So if we check the pads on the other side, they are connected to ground. So these resistors here are pulling the pins low. And the only pin that is pulled low is pin 11. And that is S2. And since the resistor is pulling it low, I'm going to assume that the other two pins are high. So I think that gives us 0, 1, 1, and that is 50 megahertz, and half of that is 25, and that corresponds to the speed we have on the board. So if we want to increase the speed, we need to change this to 1, 0, 0, and if I'm not mistaken, these are probably 0 ohm resistors. Let's measure it. And it's not on the screen, but I'm getting a value of 330 ohms. Let's remove it and measure it off the board. Okay, tiny little resistor, off you go. Okay, let's see what value we've got. If I can measure this tiny, tiny little resistor. And we're getting 330 ohms. And now that it's off the board, 
under some magnification. I can actually see that it's marked 331. And I found some in my stash. So we're good to go. Okay, let's try this. So R174 and R175 needs to be pulled low. So let's add some flux and some fresh solder instead of that crusty solder from 1993. I'm not sure I will be able to do this on camera, but let's try. And I don't have a microscope, so I see a lot less than you guys do on camera. But let's do this with what we've got. And the resistors I had in my stash are slightly larger. But as long as we can make them fit, we're good. And we better clean that mess up before we check for continuity. Okay, that's clean enough. Okay, and between S1 and ground, we now have 330 ohms. Perfect. And on pin 6 for S0, I'm getting 330 ohms. So both legs are now pulled low. I guess it's time for a test. Okay, let's start with something cheap. TX266. Okay, let's see if it will post. And it does. Okay, so we didn't kill it. That's a good start. And we've got a configuration error. Let's see what it is. And it's reporting 486DX2 with a math co. But the BIOS in this machine doesn't report the speed. The error is for the missing hard drive. So let's connect the hard drive. And try again. And the machine boots. I guess we should run some benchmarks. And even Windows seems to be working. So I think we're doing pretty well here. Okay, let's run Doom. And it works. It's definitely playable. We'll see what numbers we get, but this is pretty comparable to what we had before, running the DX4 at 75. Yeah, I think this is even faster. And we've got 2778 real ticks. Let me check, but I think that's actually faster than what we had with the DX4. I checked and it is. That's interesting. So we had 25.88 with the DX4 running at 75 megahertz. And now we're getting 26.88. So that's kind of interesting. We've got one FPS more running a DX266 than running a DX4 at 75. That doesn't quite make sense to me, but that's what we've got. So I'd say this hack is working. We're definitely running at 66 megahertz. Let's confirm this with another benchmark. Let's try check CPU. And it's reporting 486 DX2 C step. 66.9 megahertz with the bus clock speed at 33.4 that is freaking awesome well we're not gonna stop here are we because i've got this rather unusual chip here and this is the am486dx280 so this 486 here runs at 80 megahertz if we can get that board up to 40 megahertz. Let's quickly test this chip to see if it's working. And then we'll have a go at some more overclocking. And uh, this is a 3 volt chip. So we're gonna have to use the socket blaster. Okay, let's see if it works. Well, it posts. It's a bit of an oddball. But it's quite useful for doing tests like this. Okay, so let's get back to the bench. Uh, do some more soldering. Okay, so according to the frequency table, to set the board to 80 MHz, we need to remove the resistor at S0. And S0 is pin 6. And pin 6 is R174. Okay, and I managed to remove it without melting that ID connector. 
or blowing the other resistors off the board. So let's find out if this board will run at 40 MHz. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's see if we can get this Oddball 486 running at full speed. Well, it still posts and it boots. All good so far. Okay, let's try Doom. Well, it runs and it's pretty snappy. And we've got 2381 real ticks. Holy smokes, it's working. This damn chip is actually running at 80 megahertz. We've got 31.36 FPS. Okay, let's push this crazy project a bit more. So we're now running at 40 megahertz and we've got 3.3 volts. And from previous tests, we know that voltage will drop a bit on the load. So let's crank it up a bit. And we also know that it's a bit unstable if we take it too high up. And we need to get it to around 3.45 for the next test. And at this voltage, this buck converter is very unstable. And that's probably because we only had 5 volts to begin with. So that difference just doesn't seem to be enough to run the buck converter stable. So when we take it to 3.4 it starts switching between 3.4, 3.5 and 3.6 and since it is going to drop a bit on the load I think this is safe to test. Let's see what my 5x86 thinks about overclocking to 40 MHz. Okay, fingers crossed. So let's check the voltage. 3.46 and the system posts so the buck converter stabilizes even at 3.45 and the system boots we're doing pretty well here and it's stable enough to run windows so let's do some benchmarks but I'd say we're doing pretty well here here goes Holy smokes, what a difference from when we began this crazy project. And uh, we're getting 1957 real ticks. And that gives us 38.16 FPS. <laughs> well, how's that for a very slow, unupgradable IBM PS1? Not too bad. So we have actually maxed out Doom on this old IBM. It doesn't get much more fun hacking away at hardware than this. And the system reports an AMD 486DX4 running at 120 MHz. And that makes perfect sense, because we're not running that 5x86 at full speed yet. But we're not gonna stop here, are we? So the way the 5x86 works is that if we set the board to 2x, it will run at 4x. But this board doesn't have a jumper to do so. So we're gonna have to hack that board again. If you have any thoughts on how that might be possible, leave your thoughts down below. And now is a good time to watch one of the previous videos about this crazy project, if you haven't seen them yet. I would like to end this video by saying thank you to my patrons, you guys are the best. If you want to become an early supporter of this channel too, check out the link below this video. And a special thanks to Thermal Wrong for finding those sneaky resistors on the board.